Greetings, everyone, at the World Bufo Alvarius Congress 2020. Martin Ball here. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you here digitally, virtually, through the medium of Zoom video. I would just like to start by thanking Mario and all the other organizers and volunteers and everyone working on this project for this year, of course. Events like these are, are facing unprecedented challenges and also opportunities due to coronavirus and everything that's going on in global society right now. So it's kind of a, a new way of connecting is through these videos and by joining in the conference in this way. And definitely I'm sorry that I'm not able to be there in person or to be there live on video uh, streaming with you, but it is a great pleasure and honor for me to be able to speak with you here through this format. So, one of the themes for this year's Congress, of course, is the topic of integration of 5-MeO-DMT experiences. And that's what I would like to spend some time speaking about today. And integration, it's an interesting topic when it comes to 5-MeO-DMT because 5-MeO-DMT ultimately is very different from other psychedelics and other entheogens. And so it has, in a sense, different requirements for integration. And I also, something that I do wanna talk about today is that when viewed as an energetic event and understood from that perspective, then the energetic processing that takes place within the 5-MeO-DMT experience itself is actually very crucial for how the experience then gets integrated after the event. And in some ways, when properly addressed as an energetic event, it can even override the need for what we can think of as integration, you know. Um, so where, where, where to begin? I think one of the first things that I'd like to acknowledge with 5-MeO-DMT or toad medicine, whatever it is that you're working with or experiencing, as I'm sure all of you know, is that there is a wide variety of ways in which people react or respond to the medicine. And in other words, not everyone has the same experience. Now, in my personal view and opinion, the ultimate experience with 5-MeO-DMT is the full non-dual experience, the experience of being infinite consciousness, infinite being, infinite energy, infinite unconditional love and awareness. That is the peak of the 5-MeO-DMT experience. That is the peak of of human experience in general, that there's, there's nothing beyond that. There's nothing beyond experiencing yourself as the universal consciousness and being that is everyone and everything at all times and in all places. But not everyone who works with toad medicine or who works with 5-MeO-DMT necessarily has that experience. And sometimes it might take several or even many sessions with the medicine before that level of experience unfolds for people. So if that's the peak, if that's the ultimate experience, below that, there are many different levels at which an individual's ego might be holding on, might be struggling, might be fighting with the experience. And also there's the possibility for the ego to be indulging, to be projecting, to be avoiding. Um, because the non-dual experience arises when the ego completely dissolves away that individuated perspective that you think of as yourself. You say, well, I am this person. This is my name. This is my identity. And the energy of 5-MeO-DMT can completely override that personal individuated perspective and when someone lets go all the way into that and also maintains awareness which this is also important to note that not everyone maintains awareness when this happens for many people especially the first maybe first few times that that happens 
they have a whiteout. They come back from the experience and they say, well, I don't remember it. That I took the medicine and then everything started to become infinite and everything became light. And then 15 minutes later, I woke back up and suddenly I was there again. So that's what happens when the ego is there. The ego goes away, the ego comes back, but the individual does not stay focused, does not maintain awareness throughout that expansion and absorption experience. And so then there's a disjuncture and there's awareness. My ego is here, I don't know what happened, then my ego came back. And that in and of itself is not the full experience of 5-MeO-DMT, it is not the full non-dual experience. The full non-dual experience is you're in your ego, your ego dissolves, everything opens up to infinity, but you maintain awareness, you maintain focus, you stay present within your experience, not present as the individual that you think you are, but present as the universal consciousness and awareness that you are. And then you're there, and then the ego comes back, and you're still there. That is the ultimate experience of 5-MeO DMT, of having that through line of awareness and focus that stays all the way through. But again, not everybody gets that, and certainly not right away. And so that means people have different things that they need to process and different things that they need to integrate after their 5-MeO experience. And we also have to allow room for, there are individuals who perhaps only have one experience with 5-MeO-DMT, and it might be life-changing for them, it might be paradigm-shattering, worldview-altering. Um, but then there is also the idea of working with 5-MeO-DMT as an ongoing process of personal transformation. And this is very, very different from just having a one-off experience or even having several or a few 5-MeO experiences rather than looking at it as I'm looking to just have a big experience where I'm just blown out and I'm amazed to I am working with this as a tool to reformat the energetic structures of my being. And this also for me would be the highest form of use of 5-MeO-DMT, not just chasing after the big experience, but working through these energetic processes, and that's what they are. They are processes of energy to restructure yourself because the ego works as a collection of energetic patterns that largely is functioning unconsciously, where we are just doing the things we've always done, thinking the things we've always thought, expressing the things we've always expressed. And it's usually trapped within an identity of who we think we should be or who we ought to be or who we want to be or who we want to project to others. But this creates limitations within us so that we are coming from a place of artificiality. We are coming from a place of construction rather than authenticity. And the great value of 5-MeO-DMT is that it can help you deconstruct these patterns and learn how to identify the authentic energy within yourself and give you the courage and knowledge to allow yourself to be that. So people who have a traumatic experience, they need certain kinds of integration to help them through that experience. People who missed the big experience, they need another kind of integration to help them with that experience. But what I'm really interested in talking to you about today is how do we approach this as an energetic process where the focus then is on the process itself and there integration takes on a very different kind of meaning. It's not about for example, making sense of your experience. It's not about developing new beliefs from your experience. It's not about analyzing the content of your experience. It is rather focused on the energy of the experience itself, how that energy was encountered 
and processed during the medicine experience and then brought to a point of completion within the experience. And you see, when this is accomplished, then the idea of integration is actually not quite so significant. So one of the things that I do, aside from speaking about 5-MeO-DMT and writing books about 5-MeO-DMT, is I off also offer what I call non-dual and theogenic integration, counseling and consultations with individuals. And so let me just share with you a very common theme that arises within these consultations that I do with individuals who have had maybe a 5-MeO experience or ayahuasca or mushrooms, but it's most often with 5-MeO-DMT is people tell me, they contact me and they say, well, I had this really powerful experience. And then afterwards, I felt ungrounded and um, I had difficulty distinguishing between my thoughts and what's real. I couldn't tell if I was in a dream or not in a dream. Or um, after my experience, I found myself just crying a lot or I was anxious, um, you know, all different kinds of ways that people respond. But what they all have in common is that in the 5-MeO-DMT experience, we have this potential to raise up to this infinite level of energy to where every molecule of your being is vibrating in this infinite, raging supernova of unconditional love. That's the highest potential of the experience. So all this energy gets raised up. And as this energy raises up and expands, what happens is, is it runs into the places in our ego where we are closed down, where we are shut off, where we are hiding aspects of ourselves, where we are denying aspects of ourselves, where we have edited and censored ourselves, where we have not allowed ourselves to be our authentic, true energetic selves. And this is great. This is one of the values of 5-MeO. And it has a potential to find these places in a way that other medicines generally don't. You know, just to give you another example, having worked with many people with 5-MeO DMT and also, you know, offer consultations with people, um, that it's very common for people to tell me that, you know, they've spent years working with ayahuasca and, you know, they've worked through some of their shit and they've worked through some of their stuff, but that when they encountered 5-MeO-DMT, it found the places they were holding on and the places that they were blocked at a deeper level, at a more intimate level than anything they'd ever experienced before. And that's because 5-MeO-DMT is operating at a higher energetic level than any other psychedelic or entheogen that's available for humanity to experience. So it has this way of finding the most subtle places where we are blocked or we are holding on. And all of these energetic blocks, the places that we are holding on, they are all contained within the physical body. There is nothing, in my view, there is nothing in any way metaphysical about this. So when I'm talking about blocked energy, I'm not talking about your aura. I'm not talking about your spirit. I'm not talking about your soul. I'm not talking about anything like that. That this is all carried within the body because the personality, the ego, is energetically carried and expressed through the body. Your ego does not exist in some disembodied state. It is something that is expressed and actualized through your physical being. So that means that the blocks of your ego are also carried in your physical being, that we act out our egos as characters that define the ways we speak, the ways we gesture, the way we act, the way that we react. And it is exhibited in our body language, in our tone of voice, in our facial expressions. All of this taken together creates the illusion of the ego, of the individuated self, the character that this universal consciousness is playing and performing through you, through the vehicle of your body, through the vehicle of your being. 
So as this infinite energy races through your being and wants to explode in this supernova of ecstatic, orgasmic love, it's finding those places where you're confused, where you're holding on to beliefs, where you're keeping your wounds, where you're hiding your secrets, where you are deceiving yourself, where you are pretending, where you're trying, where you're projecting, where you're wanting, finds all of these places. And that's where the potential is, that if you work with that energy in the experience itself, and you let go deeper and deeper, and also if you can recognize, that's my ego holding on, that's my ego fighting, that's my ego indulging. That's my ego projecting. And as you let go of that, this is where people purge with 5-MeO, where suddenly blah, all this crap they've been holding on to comes pouring out of them. Or perhaps they have to scream as they're letting it all out. Or maybe they have a full body orgasm as they're letting all of this out. But the point is, that in working with 5-MeO, what we have is the opportunity for this energetic process to take place. But in many people's experiences, this process does not reach a place of conclusion and grounding because the ego gets in the way in some capacity or another. And honestly, in some situations, it's because there was poor facilitation. And it could also could just be the context in which the person was experiencing the medicine, that it really wasn't necessarily right or more, most conducive to them. But what happens is that rather than coming out of the experience and feeling like, okay, I've processed all of this, and not only have I processed it, but I've also grounded out this process of energy and it's reached a point of completion so that now when I come back from the 5-MeO experience, I am fully here and present with myself and ready to be engaged in reality. That doesn't happen for a lot of people. And in part, it is due to, in many instances, sort of the one-off approach that in my experience i've found that people generally need multiple rounds of consuming the medicine in order to reach a point of completion within their energetic process for that particular session so my model of working with 5-meo dmt was always to give people three rounds of medicine because something that comes up in round one could then be processed perhaps in round two and then grounded out in round three Whereas if you're just taking it once and saying, oh, wow, I had my big experience. I was flopping around like a fish. I was yelling and screaming. I was babbling incoherently. I was rolling around, you know, whatever it may be. That the energy comes up and the ego freaks out or the ego does whatever it does. And then the ego comes back and clamps on. And then the person comes back and like, wow, I feel incomplete. I really need integration. I really need to integrate this. So can you see the difference where if you open up all your energy and you stay with it, you stay conscious, you stay present, you stay focused, you stay aware, and you allow what needs to take place to take place, and you allow the energy to move, then it will naturally ground out because energetic processes work in waves. So it's kind of like you bring up this giant wave and then if the ego gets in the way, it puts up a barrier to that giant wave. And then the wave starts pounding against the ego, right? And the person comes out of their experience and they're like, wow, I can't tell the difference between what I'm thinking and what's really happening because I'm confused. And then their need for integration is, well, I need, I need grounding. I need to seek help. I need to see a therapist. I need some acupuncture, I need to do some Tai Chi, I need to do some yoga, I need to meditate more, I need to adopt the right belief system, I need to reorganize my thoughts, I need to recategorize the way that I experience and think of myself. And it becomes this extra event that has to take place afterwards. But if the energy is met 
where it is. And particularly if you have not just someone who is providing the medicine to you, but is actually able to work with you to help you navigate and process the energy that arises within the experience itself. You come out of it cleaner, more grounded. And then the integration piece is quite different. So the ultimate integration, well, let me back up a moment. The full 5-MeO DMT experience, the full non-dual experience, is the ultimate energetic experience of truth. Because the truth is, and here, here's a place where I do not care what you believe, I do not care what you think, doesn't really matter, because reality is reality. It's not something that is open to just individual interpretation. There is an absolute nature to reality. And that absolute nature is that there is only one consciousness. There is only one being. There is only one true self. And each and every one of us, as individuals, we are manifestations and embodiments of that one universal consciousness and being. And that universal consciousness and being consists of energy. It is energy. Energy is real. And then everything that we experience as we, reality is a form of energy condensed into different levels of physicality, mental, emotional. All of this is energy. But in our fullest natures, we are infinite energy of love. That is who and what each one of us is. And at that level, we are all the same being. We are housed in different vehicles. We are expressed through different personalities and different egos. But at core, we are literally all one. And that's not some fluffy spiritual statement. And it's not meant to coerce people into spiritual bypassing or just getting along with other people or accepting everything. That's just all spiritual nonsense. This is just the reality. We're, we are all one being. We are literally all one being. And for those who are fortunate enough to have this full experience, and again, recognizing that not everyone does with 5-MEL, and many people don't right away, that they might have to work through various levels of resistance and withholding before they can experience this level of truth. When you experience that, you know it's true because you can feel it. And it's obvious. There's no need to prove it. There's no need to argue for it. There's no need to rationalize it. There is no need to create metaphysics and belief systems around it. It's simply the way things are. It is the suchness of being. And when you have the experience, you know it. In the same way that when you love someone, you know it. It's not an argument. It's not something you need to prove. It's not something that you need to create symbols and belief structures or anything around. You know you love someone because you feel it right here. And that energy infuses your being. And you say to them, I love you. And perhaps when you say it, it brings a tear to your eye and you feel it and you know it. And it's beautiful because it's truth. So the 5-MEO experience is the ultimate experience of love, where there is no particular object. Like when we're in love with another person, it's I love you. Whereas this is I am love. I am love. I am all. I am this. I am that. I am everything and I am nothing. I am infinite. And you feel it. You just feel it. It's not something you see. It's not something you think. 
It's not something you believe. You feel it. And when you feel it, you are it. That is you. And so people who have that, they come back and they say, well, I guess that's just how things are. I guess it, it really is true. We really are all one because I was there. I was that. And what's also immediately intuited by people who have this experience is that there is nothing beyond this. This is the ultimate experience that we can have. It is the complete transcendence of our individuated human perspective into the full unitary experience. So then we come from that and we know, well, I'm a being of energy. And what's also very clear within the 5MEO experience is that this energy is very active. It's always, see, some people who have their 5MEO experience, they just, boom. And they're out and they don't do anything. And that also is not the full experience because when someone is really in the experience, when they really are it, is that this energy is moving, it's alive, it's undulating, it's flowing, it's constantly transforming, it's moving, it's moving. And it looks, yeah, you might have seen me do this before, but this is what it actually looks like when you embody it. It's flowing, it's moving, it's open, it's free, it's dynamic, it's thoroughly expressive. And it's, it just is what it is. That when perhaps you've done these movements yourself, perhaps you've seen other people do it. It doesn't mean anything. See, that's another thing. People come back and they say, well, I was doing these movements and doing, these, doing this stuff. What does it mean? And then they seek after integration, after meaning. Energy does not mean anything. Energy simply is. It is as it is. And when you can go all the way into this and actually embody this energy, there is no distinction between the energy that you feel and the energy that you are. You simply are that. It is your true nature. It is what you are. It is what you have always been. And you can recognize that. Even if you've never had the experience before, when you go into it, you say, yes, obviously. This is obvious. I've always known this. I just forgot that I knew it. But I've always known that I am this. I am infinite, raging energy. I am love. I am this. So you go all the way into that. You process out your blocks, you release, you purge, you vomit, you scream, you laugh, you cry, whatever. So then, knowing, now knowing who and what you are, you are a being of infinite energy. The question is not, how do I integrate this? It is, how do I embody this through the limitations of the individuated self that I am as a unique individual, as a unique human being with a unique body and a unique life and a unique perspective. How, how do I do that? How do I be that? Now, some people approach it as, oh, I need to go be a monk and just like sit up in the mountains, just meditate it all the time so I can be like, mm, man, I'm in the experience and that's groovy. And other people that come out and are like, oh, I've got to share this with as many people as possible because this is amazing and I want everyone to have this experience. And then other people come out and they say, oh, I'm called to do this or that. And what happens is that this is a way that the ego is trying to co-opt the experience. It's trying to say, oh, well, it, it means that I need to do this or be that or whatever. And it doesn't. That's not true. That's just the ego. That's just the ego like trying to convince you of something. And the real question, again, is how do I be this as the individual that I am? So going back to the energetic nature of the ego, what we have as a human being is we have the natural expression of energy arises within us. And we see this in kids. When kids are excited, they're excited. When they're happy, they're happy. When they're sad, they're sad. They simply are what they are. And as their egos develop, 
And everyone around them tells them, you should be this, you should be that, you should be this way, you shouldn't be that way. Then what happens as the child matures is everyone starts to structure themselves into who they think they should be, to behave the way they think they should. Or even they decide, well, I'm going to rebel against what everybody thinks I should be, and so I'm going to be this way. But either way, the individual puts him or herself into a prison where they're no longer simply being the energy that they are when they were kids. Again, when kids are happy, they're happy. When they're sad, they're sad. When they're mad, they're mad. They just, they are what they are. There's no censoring. There's no editing that their energy arises and they embody it and they express it. And you might also notice that kids are really good for moving on. So kids might be just be terribly sad about something, but then they're not holding on to that. They're not using that sadness to shape their identity to who it is that they think that they are. So as soon they let themselves feel that energy, it arises, it's like a wave, they express that sadness, and then it's done. See, this is the thing about all of the waves of energy, that if they are not interfered with, if they are allowed to be what they are, then they arise, they express themselves, and then they ground out and they're done. And then you're ready to move on to the next thing. But adults, we don't do that. We hold on to our anger. We suppress our sadness. We tell ourselves how we should be and how we ought to be and what we need to do versus what we want to do. And we're constantly editing and censoring ourselves. So we're not being authentic. And here's the key. This is the key word of 5-MeO-DMT can help you if you undergo the process of unwinding the structures of your ego, of unwinding your self-imposed limitations, of your projections, of your illusions. You make it more possible for you to fully be your authentic self. So this universal consciousness, this universal being, is, it is your life. I mean, what do you think is making your heart beat? Where does that energy come from? Boom, 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 boom. It's this pure energy of life and being. This energy can work through your vehicle and express itself and be a vehicle for love and creativity and experience without judgment. But we censor it, we edit it, we shape it, we form it, we try and make it be this thing that we think that we're supposed to be, and then we're not really being ourselves. We're being a product of our family, of our culture, of our society, whatever, of our beliefs, our religions, our spiritual systems, our political systems, and we create these identities and we identify as these things, and we hold on to our wounds, we try and play nice or we try and play mean or we rebel or we accept or we conform and all of this is just getting in the way of being our authentic true selves. And for me, that's really the point. First of all, you cannot be your true authentic self if you do not know who and what you are. That would be impossible. How can you be yourself if you don't know who you are? If you don't know what you are? See, other, other living beings, they don't have this problem because they don't have the capacity for self-awareness, but we do. We do have the capacity for self-awareness of human beings. So the only way for us to truly be ourselves is to know ourselves. 5-MeO, through the process of letting go and surrendering and allowing, we can move into the potential of the full awareness of who and what we truly are. But then as an individual, it's not about, I just want to be in the non-dual state all the time. Nonsense. You are an embodied being. The question is, how do I embody my authentic energy as the individual that I am living in dualistic reality that has objects and subjects and we have uh, suffering and we have pleasure and we have um, rights and we have wrongs and we have things that are good and things that are bad and things that we like and things that we don't like. How, how do I embody myself authentically here? 
And what it comes down to, just like with the full 5-MeO experience, you know what is true because you feel it. The same is true for our individuated dualistic being. And it's a matter of, can you give yourself permission to authentically embody and express your energy without your ego getting in the way? You see, the ultimate integration is not to get rid of the ego. The ultimate integration is to free yourself from the prison of the ego, but the ego still remains present. The ego doesn't go anywhere. The ego continues to exist within the being. But then it's no longer a prison. It's no longer the prison guard. It's no longer the judge, the editor, the censor. So that then sadness arises, you don't judge it, you don't try and stop it, you allow the sadness to express itself. And through the human vehicle, that comes out as tears, wailing, crying. When you're happy, you allow yourself to experience your happiness. When you're angry, you allow yourself to experience your anger. These are all just waves of energy. And the clearer you become within yourself, then the less likely you are to be subject to being trapped by anger or pain or suffering. This is not to say that you will not experience these things, but you won't be trapped by it. You won't necessarily need to identify with it. You won't need to take that on and say, oh, this is my identity. I am this suffering. Rather, I experience suffering, yet I am still myself. And I am more than that. I am more than my suffering. I am more than my illusions. I am more than my pain. I am more than my anger. I am a being of energy. And my ultimate goal then is to allow myself to experience and express my energy authentically as who and what I am that is in congruence with what I experience within my life. And so as we encounter different experiences, different situations, our energy will shift and change. And as long as the ego is not getting in there and attaching and projecting and editing and censoring, then we will always maintain the ability to be ourselves, to be who and what we truly are as the individuals that we are. And for me, this is what I define as human liberation. Liberation, not from, oh, all of reality is an illusion and now I see through all the illusion. Reality isn't an illusion. There's nothing illusory about reality at all. Reality is reality. It is the energy of the universal being in the construct of subject and object. It is not an illusion. And it's not about, as I said, living without your ego. Your ego is part of you. Just as your hands are part of you, your eyes are part of you. You wouldn't want to live without these things because then you wouldn't be you. Your ego is part of you. And it's not about becoming some super spiritual person or developing a new belief system. No, it's all about the energy. To be the energy of who and what you are. So here, what I'm suggesting is that true integration is about working through this energetic process of learning who you are and then learning how to be yourself, free from your self-imposed ideas, identifications, and limitations. That is the true integration of the 5-MeO DMT experience. It's as simple as that. It's something that helps you be who you are. And then you can embody yourself freely. You can express yourself freely. You can do it with authenticity and with focus and presence and awareness. And then you simply just get to be the person that you are, knowing that you are both this individual 
And paradoxically, simultaneously, you are also the universal consciousness and being. And then you also know every person you interact with is also another version of you. And then here, again, this is the ultimate integration, is knowing that how you treat yourself inside is reflected in how you treat yourself at the exterior level. How you think of yourself internally is also how you think of and project and attach to what exists outside of you. How you interact with others is a reflection of how you interact with yourself. How you interact with things as simple as objects also is a reflection of how you interact with yourself. And if you can come at all of this with a sense of confident authenticity, this is the greatest satisfaction that you can find in your life. So when the time comes that this individual vehicle that you are, when it falls apart and breaks down and is ready to dissolve, you can look back in your life and you can say, well, I've been myself and that's the best I can do. So that's the ultimate integration. And I think perhaps, I'm looking at the clock now, I think that's probably all the time that I have. I hope you found this to be useful. Perhaps this is a little bit of a different perspective for you about what true integration really means with 5-MeO-DMT. Again, my name is Martin. It's been a pleasure to be here with you via this digital medium. Again, thank you, Mario. Thank you, everyone. World Bufo of Various Congress 2020. It's great to be with you. I think this might even be your last thing, so I hope it's been great for all of you. And um, if you feel like reaching out, you're welcome to contact me, martinball.net, or if you feel you need help integrating your experience, um, my website for that is nondualandtheogenicintegration.com. And of course, I have lots of books about 5-MeO-DMT. The most important one would be in Theogenic Liberation, Unraveling the Enigma of Non-Duality with 5-MeO-DMT Energetic Therapy. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. I hope it's been as fun for you as it has been for me. See you later.